Hello everyone, this is where we left off of our last project. We had just finished with uh, creating our low res version of our model, which is this one right here. And we also have our high res one, which is hiding underneath. Get in there. Okay. Now, um, last lesson I didn't actually save, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Just do file 18 as, and cancer tet form space to be next to. Okay, save as. Always good to keep iterations of your saves, otherwise if you end up the corrupted file, you are hosed. Okay, going forward now. Um, so, we're now going to get into XNormal. So this is a different software. Um, this is a free one you can download. Um, it does a great job. Um, I'll go ahead and clear out my previous work. Okay. Alright, so XNormal is very straightforward. Um, it does help to have a good computer with a good uh, processing power and RAM to be able to go through and bring your, uh, pick out your, your maps. So let's, I'll go through this very lightly. Again, I'm not doing tutorials on every software package in the pipeline, but I will give you guys kind of a little bit of a walk through my process. So <clears throat> starting out, we're going to look at our low definition meshes. So click on this icon over here on the right. Um, I'm going to go where it says file heal here and I'll right click in this area. I'll go to add meshes. Okay. Here's my canister low. Go ahead and select that one. Go to open. Okay. Good. Next, I'm going to go to the icon that says High Definition Meshes. Go ahead and select that one. And I'll again go ahead and right click on here and go Add Meshes. And I'm going to go to Canister High. Okay. And open that up. Good. Next, we're going to go to our Bake Options. <clears throat> so which maps do we need to have here? Um, we do need a normal map. Um, we have see here, um, go ahead and take a thickness map, um, curvature map, and I think that's, we'll pull a cavity as well, ambient occlusion, and height map. Take all those maps. Currently, I have the size set to 4K. You might be working on something smaller and 4K might be too much. You can go ahead and drop it if you need to. They have all these options from 4K all the way up to 16 um, and higher. So if you guys aren't familiar what these are, these are pixels on how big the texture map is. Um, 4K is pretty standard right now. 2K is, uh, will give you a decent amount of texture. 1K, you're losing some quality there. Uh, anything below that, I don't even use any of these anymore. Um, above, these things start to take more, more uh, memory, but they do optimize some of your, uh, your batches if you're dealing with game development. But it does have longer load times since it requires more texture, or the texture map size is just so much bigger. Okay, so 4K is what I'm staying at. I'm going to define where the output file is going to go to, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this guy here. here. Um, now we'll just go ahead and export it to, we'll create a folder inside here. I'll just call this one X normal maps. Okay. Oh, okay, that's right. I got to talk down there. So canister and save. So all of them will be a prefix with canister on it. All that clicky clacking you're hearing around the background, that's my dog. He's just pacing and being neurotic. If you've been through some of my other tutorials, you know him. Anyways, all right. So that was the, the slip up I was making. Again, I'll just go through this one more time because I had a bit of a brain fart there. Um, so this icon here designates the path. You gotta put down here what the where it's going to, which I'm saying X normal is that new folder I just created. Um, and then I'm gonna call this uh, canister. 
And now every map that will have canister as the first name, and then it'll be normal, uh, height, uh, occlusion, all those ones there. Okay, we go ahead and hit save. Okay, final step here. We gotta go over to where it says um, uh, tools. And we're gonna go to ray distance calculator. And we'll tell it to go. Okay, so now it's going through and it's calculating the distance for minimum and maximum between the low res and the high res. And you pretty much just wanna stop and you start seeing these numbers move around. Go ahead and hit stop. And then you go to copy results. So it copies its results. And it'll just go ahead and close this. And now if you go over to where it says low res mesh, it actually has those numbers in the max and min for, uh, <clears throat> for these uh, maximum frontal ray distance and maximum rear ray distance. Okay. All right, so now we are all set up. Let's go ahead and bake off our maps. So let's hit generate maps. And I used to pause the videos in these areas, but I'm not going to pause so you guys can see realistically how long this is going to take. For a decent computer, it's kind of hauling right through these things with no problem at all. Um, if you have a slower machine, this could take a little bit of time, but mine seems to have no issues with it. So while it's doing this, I'm going to kind of explain what the Photoshop process is here. Um, eventually, we're going to go through and pull one of these files into Photoshop. First, we'll check them inside of inside of uh, Substance Scanner and see what they look like. And then from there, okay, so here's the height map. I think that's going to be okay for now, so let's go ahead and close this. All right, so I'll finish up. There we go. There's my height map. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll pull this into Photoshop, and I'm basically going to be using uh, um, their magic wand tool, basically going through and deciding um, what areas um, are going to be what colors for these UV shells in this area here, um, in these areas. And then I'll designate a specific color for them, creating a new texture map, and that will be the ID map. And if you guys at this point should be familiar with what an ID map is, um, but just in case you're not, um, a, in a nutshell is what it does. It basically tells um, Substance Painter what, what um, when you do an ID map mask, you say this color is going to be metal. This particular metal I'm picking. I'm not. I'm just giving an example. There's no real metal. Um, but <clears throat> any other parts of this object in here will also have that same metal. Um, so what that means is like you know like this here and this here and this here and this here. They all are like let's say I assigned it blue um, for a some kind of brushed steel. That means that this spot, this spot, this spot, and this spot will all have that same brushed steel texture automatically attached to it. And it'll use these other maps that we have going on here, the occlusion maps, the normal maps, the curvature maps, to decide if there is curve to it and how that's going to affect the texture. So um, it's really brilliant. Um, but for um, dealing with the low res, um, since you don't actually have geometry to assign the shaders to to create the ID map, we actually have to manually paint it in. So using these texture maps is how we're going to take care of that. So. Um, after we're finished with these bakes, that's the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these things all into Photoshop. Actually, I'm sorry, let me back up a second. Um, I'll plug some of these into Substance Painter, see what they're looking like. And then I will uh, go into Photoshop and I'll paint away any artifacts that happen to be inside of um, these, ba these baked maps. Um, and anywhere there that's good, we'll just go ahead and move on to the texturing portion. Um, inside of Photoshop with our D map.
So I'm going to let this continue going all the way through, and I'll stop at the end and then show you where all the maps are located. Um, but this will be pretty much the, the chunk of this video is just the bake out process from X normal. And then I might plug one into in Maya, um, but we're going to go in the next video into plugging these things in and then bringing them over into Photoshop. So if you guys don't feel like you need to watch this part as my maps are all being baked out, feel free to check out and just check into the next video. Um, or you can fast forward it, whatever uh, suits your fancy. I would put on music, but I was told in my last videos not to do that. So, no music. This is the occlusion map. It's taking a while. It is getting there. Almost done.
All right. <clears throat> that is all the maps. Let's go ahead and take a look, make sure that they are all present. have two screens. Anyways, C drive, I have this on a USB drive. I don't use I do not recommend ever using a USB drive as a form of production. Um at least not I mean transferring from one to the other is fine, but doing it to where it is if you're just working off your thumb drives, that is a big no no. Don't just work off your thumb drives. Keep it on the computers, back it up on your thumb drives, that's fine. All that said, let's go ahead and take a look here. Here's scenes. Here's X normal maps, and there they all are. We got our cavity, curvature, height, normal, occlusion, thickness, base, and weight. Excellent. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video now. We're at 20 minutes again. So um, in the next lesson, uh, we're gonna take a look at these maps look like plugged in, and then go into Photoshop and start working on doing some editing. So thanks for watching. See you guys in the next lesson.